Welcome back to the food forest, everybody. Today's tour is actually not my garden. This is one of my first consultation jobs. Um, we'll call him John. And uh, actually, we've called him Tom before, so let's call him Tom. And uh, in one of my previous videos, I mentioned that there's this guy who's like one of the nicest guys I've ever met. And he told me that there was a flash sale on some plants. And uh, he was going to like pick them up for me, drive them out to my house, and drop them off. This is that guy. And uh, he had sent a video for one of the viewer vids, but considering how much he's helped me out in the past and how priceless this video was, so, so this guy sent me 29 clips to edit into a, into a minute, and at first I thought, oh my gosh, uh, Tom. He was, he was a, a joy to do the permaculture consultation with because his joy for what he was about to take on, it was like, mine when I started and I kind of miss that level of newness and excitement and I still have it it's just changed a little bit but uh, it, you know the first couple of years you really have so much passion and when you first decide that you're gonna do this it, it really just over uh, flows through you he's in that state right now and you'll see it in his video I'll put the design up for his backyard and then you can see him walking around showing the plants. And basically the idea with this design is to overplant everything originally, see what does well, not everything's gonna do well, and then select based on stuff he likes to eat, uh, how well plants are growing based on the soil climate, the moisture profile in the soil. You know, we're kind of taking a Sepp Holzer approach here where we over sow and then we let nature sort it out and we'll guide it to where we want it to go. So if it looks like chaos in his backyard, it looks like way too many plants, it is, it very much is. Um, but that's kind of the goal, that's, that's what we're going for here and we'll selectively manage it going forward. So I hope you enjoy this video. This is uh, Tom's Backyard Food Forest, it's right in suburbia. He's got a patio in an already small backyard, so it was only about, I think it's about 10 or 11 feet deep and 40 feet wide, and that's what we're working with. It's a small area, and we put in many, many trees, plants, bushes, pollinator attractors. You can do a lot in a small space, and this video is gonna show you exactly how much. Hopefully, we'll be able to go back there with the drone after COVID is all done. I had hoped to go there myself to film this, uh, but I asked him if he wouldn't mind filming it and putting it in viewer vids. But like I said, it was so good, I just need to put it in here. So without further ado, this is Tom's Food Forest, and I hope you guys enjoy it as much as me. He's a really nice guy, and please leave comments below if you really dig his place. All right, let's get to it. Okay, so the first part of my food forest is here on the west side of my house, and we are now facing north. This is uh, English Ivy, which is here from the previous owner, and I haven't decided if I'm gonna replace it or not yet. Here is my clover path, which only survived up till there, and I'm gonna have to work on that afterwards. Here I have some existing uh, hostas from the previous owner as well. Uh, against my consultant's advice, I've put in <laughs> some sunchokes are sticking out right here and directly into the soil instead of putting them in pots. Hopefully there will be lots of free food that we can dig up this fall. So moving in a little bit closer I have an assortment of pollinating plants over here to attract beneficial pollinators. On this side there is asparagus, strawberry, raspberry, um, Yep. <laughs> here we have some comfrey that seems to have crept up a little bit around here from digging a hole to plant this uh, chum. I believe it's a chum. It's either chum or a plum. Its partner is going to be over here in a second, like to the right. In the corner there's a yellow raspberry. Um, and then here, I'm sorry, uh, right here are two kiwis. This will be the female and the male. Uh, this one vined out reaching into the sun. Uh, and then got bitten off by a rabbit. Hashtag food forest. So here's a better shot of the kiwi, male and female. There's another raspberry here. 
a little bit of comfrey popping up in between. This comfrey is also overshadowed. Surprise, surprise. A Saskatoon, whoop, Saskatoon berry, which is coming up back here. Uh, that's what happens when you buy too many things uh, and insist on planting them just because they're on sale. So along the north fence, uh, we decide to do a bit of an espalier attempt. There are one, two, three, four pear trees, followed by 10 apple trees all the way along the back here. Some are columnar and some are meant for espalier or had been pre-set up as espalier, and others are just a shot in the dark. We'll see how that goes. Between the first two pear trees, I have a buffalo berry bush, which is meant to be a nitrogen fixer and as a sacrificial plant. Sorry, Mr. Buffalo. This is a gooseberry planted in the Central Island Guild, and you'll notice that there are one, two little berries. The interesting thing about this specific uh, variety of gooseberry is that it only ever makes two berries, and it stays frozen in time for two months. One berry per month. Not your mama's gooseberry. After reaching out to Steven Spielberg for how to shoot this, I figured out this is the best way to get it. This is a persimmon right here, which is uh, currently smaller than some of the pollinator plants. It's a bit of a miracle plant because it seemed to have been dead and just popped some leaves out about a week ago, which would make that around uh, July, beginning of July. Perhaps the star of the backyard is this one pollinator plant, uh, which I don't remember what it's called, but it's yellow and it's nice. So this is my slug tree, which took a lot of breeding, but I managed to make one. I don't know if you can see them, but it is growing slugs over here and here and here. Um, sometimes it'll spit out a nectarine. I'm still trying to fix it. Over here is my magic mulberry. The trick with this one is you plant it here and then it comes up here. So this one here is one of my 10 Hascaps. They all um, are the same size as when I planted them a month and a half ago. It might have to do with the fact that I haven't watered anything other than at the time of planting in May, but uh, it's all good. And here's another comfrey. I feel like every time I dig a hole, another four of them pop up. It must be a cut and comfrey again situation. <laughs> so this part of the northeast part of the yard actually had a hugel culture right here using fresh wood that I had chopped down from clearing the area to prepare it um, for the food forest. And um, it's been a bit of a nightmare trying to get to the soil and moving the logs out of the way. And I'm hoping that the nutrients haven't been sucked up by all the fresh wood, although it was sitting for a year before I planted stuff and things seem to be doing okay. So we'll see how it goes in the long run. You're looking at a seedling pawpaw here, a blackberry, and a few hascaps um, and pollinators and a couple of annuals. I threw in some root vegetables. I believe these are beets um, or radishes. One day I'll know the difference. So I have um, four pawpaws in my plan. One little pawpaw went to the market. This little pawpaw stayed home. This little pawpaw had roast beef. And this little pawpaw is dead. So we're north facing now on the patio adjacent to the house and you have a um, arbor or pergola right here. Uh, so I put a grape here. Um, which I didn't think was going to make it, and it has, because I removed the tile, dug up some stone dust, and uh, hoped for the best. And then against my consultant's advice, I threw a comfrey in there, hoping it would drill down and give access to more soil <laughs> for the grape. We'll see what happens with that. So at the other post buried into the patio, I planted a grape trying to go up this column. And it wasn't growing at all, so I had, you know, given up on it, thinking, you know, I dug it up, tried to plant it in gravel with some soil dumped on top, and it wasn't going to make it. So I did the same thing against advice, 
calm free. Then I threw in some dandelions and other weeds hoping they would drill down as well. And a chickpea just for some uh, nitrogen. And then of course they decided to leaf out. So maybe it's working, or maybe I'm lucky, or maybe I just need to water my stuff for once. In the original plan for the espalier, this whole fence on the north side was expected to have lots of sunlight because I had pruned the neighbor's tree back flush with the fence. The problem is that I forgot that the tree was alive and it's been growing back because it's alive and casting shadows because it's alive. And now if I cut it, I feel like it's going to fall and destroy stuff. So we're now at the northeast corner of the yard. This is a Chicago hardy fig, which seems to be doing okay. I have some mint that's crept in from the neighbors, a freebie that everyone warns me is going to take over, but I'm okay with that because I'm not experienced enough to know if that's a problem, really. Uh, over here we have lots of strawberries. I planted 75 strawberry plants throughout the yard because I don't really know what 75 strawberry plants will do to a yard. This is the almighty Egyptian walking onion. It's almighty because I'm Egyptian and I feel the need to call it that. It hasn't walked, it hasn't talked, it has this little bundle of micro onions on top. It hasn't changed in a month and a half. I feel like that's a recurring theme and it's either my soil, my watering, lack thereof, or maybe it's myself. We'll see if the Egyptian in me gets this thing to boost. So this is actually an um, important thing. Because of the wood chip thickness, you can actually see under my neighbor's fence reflection. That's a puddle on top of his soil and lawn. You can see how the reflection moves. That's a pure lake that he's got going there under the fence. This was a grape that I planted. And this little opening here is the result of rabbits coming through and eating things which are for them, uh, but really for me. So instead of hearing it through the grapevine, they ate it through the grapevine. <laughs> I think this grape is done so. Okay, so facing south now, this side of the patio has again the strawberries, raspberries, and uh, asparagus along the patio. And I have three hazelnut plants, one, two, and then there's a third one that isn't showing very well in the middle. So just on the fence behind the hazelnuts, I have a high bush cranberry here and a second one back here. It's kind of mixed in with the previous hostas and whatnot. They're not hostas. I don't know what they are, but they're growing in the same spot. <laughs> I think I have a hazelnut. And then this is on the other side of the house, on the east side. And so this is all wood chipped up that I threw on after I planted everything and I had cut a bunch of branches and didn't have a spot for them. So I got them mulched or chipped up, threw them here and inoculated it with King Strephoria uh, wine cap mushroom spawn. And I'm hoping for the best. This is some mushroom compost with horse manure sitting on top of biochar, charging it up. This is our in patio bed. Um, I had to cut five crab apple trees out of here and then I put sorrel in three spots. I have a massive kale that got knocked over by the wind, which has gone significantly to seed so that I can plant a million of them because I have lots of space for them. And then I have some melon. I think it's melon. It might be squash or zucchini. Greens, tomatoes. Uh, there's romaine hiding behind there, which is what the rabbits break under the fence to get to. Well, they eat the other stuff. And then I have the blueberry right here, which came with blueberries on it, so I can't take credit for that, but I'm excited about that. And then a little blueberry plant down here, which doesn't show because it's getting sh shadowed by, uh, or covered up by some annuals that I thought would somehow be good there. Here is the plum that matches up with the chum, invisible chum back there on the fence. And then I have two sour cherry bushes there and this is a gratuitous close-up of the mystery yellow flower which is actually called a i don't know <laughs> hold on i gotta read the little ticket thingy i believe it's a 
lance-leaved cryposis, uh, if I'm saying it without an accent. And this is an apricot tree. We'll see what it will do. But it looks a lot healthier than when I planted it, so I'm excited about that. I think a lot of the advice I was given is good advice. The trick is to listen to it and then do it, as opposed to listening to it, agreeing with it, and then just doing whatever is easier and faster. Mm -hmm.